This is an Audio Wool original. This episode of Fright Day is brought to you by Drinks of Hell Chipotle Hot Sauce by Fright Day. Bold Chipotle flavor blended with habanero peppers for just the right burn. Kissed with garlic and passion fruit. Zero human blood, like none at all. Visit shop.frightday.com before the first batch disappears. Hey guys, thanks for listening. If you'd like to support us, go to patreon.com slash frightday. Pick up. Yeah, I need to pick it up. Why are you still picking up? Go inside. I don't like it. <laughs> Come on. It takes too much time. Kelly, you got to start it going. It takes too much time. Oh, jeez. It is totally unnecessary. Just like right now, it's unnecessary to go inside. We should always be on the it's porch. It's cold out here. <laughs> Feels good. It's brisk. It's healthy. Mm. Crisp fall air. That I have a student who wants to interview you. How do you spell Podesta? H I L L A R Y. It's a funny joke. (laughs) It is Fright Day. I'm your host, Byron. Just because you've survived a traumatic event with the threat seemingly gone and everyday life resuming, doesn't mean you should feel safe or are safe. Time doesn't heal all wounds, not entirely, and evil doesn't die. It just takes on another shape. We'll talk now. I bit my bit my cheek. Wow. Okay. Ouch. Gosh darn it. That's smart. Um, we'll talk about that tonight as we review David Gordon Green's Halloween Ends. I'm joined tonight by Kelly. Hello. So prompt. Never been that prompt ever. I usually have to digitally move your voice. See, look at how nice I'm being to you today. You're behaving, and Sam can't make it because the the town needed a new boogeyman. <laughs> Corey. Uh, are you ready to apologize, Kelly? Which one am I apologizing for? Well, it seems like you uh, you did an albilic. Oh, I did not do an you albilic. You almost did a belic. I did not do an albilic. We mentioned that you might be doing a little side episode about MIA and her relation with Tamil and uh, Lemuria. Yeah. And it turns out... She's not awesome. She had one heck of a week. Oh, like specifically this week? Well, on October 12th, she oh, said... No. Let's see... If Alex Jones pays Hold for the wait, wait, light, this was right after his verdict, right? Yes, okay. the, the okay. $965 million verdict. Okay, okay. If Alex Jones pays for lying, shouldn't every celebrity pushing vaccines pay too? Okay, so I'm just going to throw out there that I have more empathy for people of color who are anti-vax because there is a long history. There is. You know, gives cause. You should also know that she, I mean, she's... Not from the United States. Nope. <laughs> she was a refugee, a Tamil refugee. Which is a big deal. But it's, traumatic. it's a little different, Kelly. It's the, very the, different, the but it's still United traumatic. Is a little different. And also that would I mean she's she's got kind of a deep history of being anti vax as well. She said in two thousand twenty, actually, um, if I have to choose the vaccine or chip what's the chip and you know, implying that the vaccine contains a chip. Oh. The Bill Gates chip, you know. Oh, I'm gonna Wait, choose, choose a death. vaccine or a chip. Yeah, I mean, I mean, she's not really being clear there because that I doesn't make agree. any sense. Well, she doesn't make a lot of sense. QAnon Anonymous, actually, no. I know in the old Discord server a couple weeks ago, I was digging, yeah, digging into candy there. Okay, I'll allow it because it's spooky chain season, Kelly. It might be one of our last times recording on the porch this season. Jacob Marley, just stop it with that. Uh, she's also... No, really? You're well, going to just keep going? QAnon Anonymous actually covered a little bit of this because, I mean, timing is really kind of funny, but it's important to talk about when celebrities go off the rails like this. Great. In 2021, she said, As a witness, I saw the sun come out and the bright blue sky for about 20 minutes. Then in no time, I saw about 10 cloud seeding plane trails instantly. That's her mistyping. And now back to dark gray. The dull and deliberate. Suicide rates are high in UK. Cancel cloud seeding. 
implying that the United Kingdom is cloud seeding to okay. make people depressed. Um, she's also a Pizzagate person. She believes. No, she's yeah. Not. Well, she said something. I don't have this tweet for some reason. Oh my God. She supports BLM, even though I think she said something pretty critical about them. But when the government changes, we need to get the pedos out, <laughs> implying that there's a, a you know a cabal of pedophiles in the government. Okay, where does she live? Right now? Mm -hmm. She's not in the United Kingdom anymore. This is really distressing. I just want to make sure that you understand that. Well, you brought her up, and you have a way of cursing anyone you talk about. This is on you. MIA says she's now a Christian, and... It, Why? Well, she had a, a vision of Jesus. Hmm. Yeah, she was raised Hindi, but changed in 2017. That could be the point where all of this happened. But either way... That would make sense. The QAnon Anonymous folks go kind of deep into it. Whoopsies. See, Blavatsky okay. would have told her to stick with her roots. Well, I don't think that's true. Blavatsky, you know, uh, continued expanding her outlook throughout her no, entire but life. Blavatsky, when she traveled in India, really encouraged people to maintain chew the food in your mouth <laughs> it's just skittles yeah just stop putting them in your mouth though please she felt like the eastern religions were far more adjacent to truth than christianity that's very interesting um mm -hmm. do you have anything else to apologize for <laughs> well i guess we don't need to publicly do that one mm, for now i think i'm good quit cursing people okay i don't mean to and also do some research I do all the research. I think that you sometimes give a lot of people benefit of the doubt and bring them up before really digging into them. I mean, I prefer to assume that people are good. Well, that's nice of you. Beware David Gordon Green, because we're talking about you tonight, so apparently you're probably a fucking psycho now, too. I need you to quit quit with the loud food. And also give me a Skittle if, if we're doing this right now. Is there anything else? Not that many. I only need, like the... <gasps> I got my new passport today. It's exciting. Why is it exciting? Because I didn't know if I was going to get it in time. Where are you going? Oh, yeah, you're going to Egypt. Uh-huh. Paris. Uh-huh. The old catacombs. Yes. <sighs> well, actually, I'm going because I need to get fitted for a set of vampire teeth from the same guy that did them for... For baggins, bag. of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We really can't chew Skittles the whole time, I don't think. Okay. I love them. I'm a big fan of Skittles. Okay. However... So I want you to pay close attention to... What are you doing, the right? The combination of pajamas, socks, and pillow. So you, you've you decorated your children's room for Christmas. No, 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 no. Literally, this was her 100%. No, unbelievable. No, I swear, I swear I, to God. What's I the number? Everyone, CPS. I swear Does someone, to God. Come on. This I is insane. I swear to You're God. You're not a target. We I don't swear need to, God. to do this. I swear to God. All right, Kelly, you know what? Actually, I'm going to hand you this stack of DVD copies right now. This big stack of mm, Halloween Resurrection. I knew you were going to do it. They're not going to put themselves away. It's time for staff picks. They say so much, but they never tell you if it's any good. Mom in it. The howling horror straight ahead. So for the first, that's yeah, funny. I didn't notice those giant Michael Myers faces on those socks. <laughs> it's just too angry about all the Christmas that was on your daughter. Great. Mm. So this is the first time where I'm handing you a stack that I'm also recommending, I guess. Yeah, that is. It's kind of weird. Weird. Halloween Resurrection. I don't know if I recall anything about this movie. Who is in it? Well. Jamie Lee Curtis, Busta Rhymes, Brad. Oh, I, was, I thought it might be the one with Busta. <laughs> Brad Laurie. You know Busta where he says, trick or treat. Trick or treat. Motherfucker. Yep. It's yep. great. Oh. The original House of Horrors, the dilapidated home of the infamous serial killer Michael Myers, has now become the set of a webcam reality show. But when the veteran slasher discovers that a group of university students has taken over his old killing grounds, he decides it's time to bring the blades out wait, of retirement. Wait, wait. So we're... It's like a big brother. Oh, okay. So hold on. Yes. I'm, I'm just now fully comprehending. I thought you were just like, the movie we were putting away wasn't a movie you hated. It was like a movie that you it's, kind of recommend, but it's actually the movie you're using. Yeah. For your recommendation. Yeah. It's a rare. Holy fuck. I mean, it's very non-traditional, but do you know anything about this one? I mean, other than like the Busta Rhymes part, do you recall a, a single thing about this film? I don't. And the sad thing is, I think I might have actually even seen it in the theaters. Probably. Came out in 2002. You saw everything in the theaters then. Yeah, I did. And 
I, I don't remember anything about it. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Not a thing. No, me uh-uh. either. Uh-uh. Rick Rosenthal directed it. Ooh, who's that? In 1981, he actually directed Halloween 2. First feature film he did. Second directorial credit. Yeah, I mean, he went on to do all kinds of stuff. Uh, Distant Thunder, Nasty Boys <laughs> TV movie. Yesterday, Today, also a TV movie. But also The, the Witches of Eastwick, which I believe what? is that like a children's no spooky? i think it, i don't think it was children's i think it was like a selma and louise 1992 an unsold tv series pilot about three single witches living together to try to conjure up their idea of the perfect man told you it was like a selma and louise how how i nailed that that's not really Did a I selma nail and louise that? no the birds too uh, it, it does look like he alan smithied himself oh on that. fair so, all yeah. right all right came back to the franchise in 2002 so that's what, 20 years later? It's a lot of years. We did Halloween and Resurrection, which, you know, I don't know, not widely well received. It won an award. Let's see what award it won. Oh, Worst Film by Fangoria Chainsaw Awards. Okay. But it did win Best DVD Blu ray at the <laughs> Saturn Awards. What? I don't know. What do you have to do to. to... It's, oh, it, it was part of the Halloween Complete Collection. <laughs> What you doing over there? I mean, not intentionally anything. Either way, uh, I guess I'm recommending this because it it's part of the franchise. You gotta go full canon if you're gonna be a, a Halloween fan, right? I suppose that's true. I just... Huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we should watch that then. I guess so. I was I was a big fan of Halloween H2O, which came out after this, I believe. Was it after that? I mean, I don't know. 20 years. Was no, it? it was right before. I was going to say, I thought it was 1998. prior. Yeah, that was a good one, right? I thought it was good. I don't know. Maybe I was too young to really understand what a good film was. Well, I certainly was. Sean Patrick Thomas, Daisy McCracken, Katie Sackhoff. Why does that sound familiar? What else is she in? She was in Oculus. Lots of stuff. Riddick. Oh, yeah, that's not Don't knock but... twice. Oh, okay. I think that was a spooky, fun one you liked. You know what I liked more than that, though? Mm, what would that be? Another movie where Will Patton also plays the sheriff. Okay. Why Why? Why are character actors so specifically sheriffs? I know. It is, it, it, it's happened to a specific number of It's a type of guy. Fellas. Yeah. Yeah. We may have talked about this on the show at some point, Byron, not as one of our primary films, but I think it's come up, but it's been a long time okay i have a fun story about this movie i went and saw this movie with my youngest sister and sam i think it was right before sam and i got married Hmm. we walked out of the theater and my youngest sister was petrified she was 16 at the time i think she thought that this movie was 100 percent true she got blair witched now it's kind of funny because she's very smart and this is not I need you to tell me the name of the movie. The Fourth Kind. Can you state your name for the camera? Dr. Abigail Tyler. Okay, where would you like to begin? I am actress Mila Jovovich, and I will be portraying Dr. Abigail Tyler. This film is a dramatization of events that occurred October 2000. Every scene in this movie is supported by archive footage. Some of what you're about to see is extremely disturbing. Wake up in the middle of the night almost every night. And there's nothing unusual waking you up? There's one thing. There's an owl at my window. An owl. His eyes are big. A white owl just looking at me. Had you ever seen it before? Tommy? When I was a kid, just staring at me. I've seen it a lot. Every night this week. Four, three, two. Tell me about the owl. It doesn't look like a normal owl. There's no owl. It's not an owl. It's a really cool story, and it's very spooky. Who's it directed by? Olatunde Osunamzi. Great job. Oh, it's got your husband's wife in it. It does. Who, who is that? Mila Jovovich, which is funny because... My sister had no recognition of her, which is, I mean, for most people, that's the immediate tip off. Like, okay, this is a film. a real movie. Right. But it was presented. It had a little bit of like the reality based stuff to it. I guess it's just because it opens up. Is it? It's not like a full POV horror film. No. It's not a a mockumentary. No, it isn't. No, I mean, it's about. uh, Well, it says it's a pseudo documentary. Yeah, but it's got Mila Jovovich. Okay. So you're like, 
Okay, now that it's not. But my sister didn't know that. It was spooky. Some of the special effects were really annoying, but others were actually pretty damn spectacular. Kind of unique for its time. It's an alien-based movie. It's mm -hmm. it's about alien abductions and a therapist who's doing regression hypnosis and discovers um, patients in this small town in Alaska. Yeah. Have been encountering some pretty spooky things. Well, doesn't that was the film that stated like more people go missing in Alaska than anywhere else or something like that. Right. But it was all because like of the transient population. And well, like right. There are all sorts. Yeah. I mean, this was at least before Politis hit my mainstream. But oh, fuck. Um, it's talking about folks who have MIA themselves. Yeah. It's spooky. It deserves a watch. And also, Will Patton is great at playing a sheriff. And so you should... Wow. If you look at the... Brian, you never saw this? Oh, I'm sure I did. Yeah. Because they do some cool things with VHS footage, glitching it in a way that makes the special effects not overly cheesy. It like hides them somewhat, a little bit. Yeah. 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 There are some cool strategies employed. And it was based on some true stories, yeah. right? This is a fun one. Highly recommend 2009, The Fourth Kind. Wow. Uh, if you Not subscribe bad. to Stars, you can watch it on that. Okay. I think this actually might be the first time you brought this one up. I don't know why I felt like Sam and I had talked about it before. Oh, but could. I mean, we've been doing this podcast for seven years. So. I think eight. Eight? Someone, I got a message eight. that in the time that a person had started listening to us, they've had three children. Which is, I guess, not terribly unbelievable. But that's you crazy. Ha you had, had two. two. <laughs> yeah. So it's just. But that is crazy to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Man, Byron. Yeah. Wow. Well, wow. before we lock up, I suppose we should probably take a second to welcome and initiate some folks into the Friday Society. Let's take a step back. Back room. Oh, we yeah. can. Oh, okay. Alex? Oh, do I get to get my uh, new red cape out if we're doing initiation? No, you don't. I mean, you want to whip a red cape on? Uh huh. Do you have a mask too? Yeah. Do you bird have a, mask. a dagger? A weird dirt bird. A really mask. sharp, sharp dir dagger. A dirk. I can bring a dirk. Do you think? <laughs> okay, let's leave the dirk at home. I think that people might be intimidated. Alex L. That's A L I X. Ooh, Alex, welcome. Very nice. Welcome. Yeah. Well, we've got a fun one for you. It is yeah, Halloween, so it's pumpkin candy season. Okay. I've been having some thoughts recently, and especially tonight since I'm eating Skittles. Skittles has multiple flavors under a green shell, and they're very they the different flavors. Orange as well. I, I want you to sample all of the different flavors of green Skittles. Yeah. And come back with ranking. a ranking. All right. That's the most insane one you've ever done. <laughs> I hate what? this. I That's hate... the most insane well, one. I'm a huge lime Skittle guy. And when they green appled me, I, okay. swore, I swore off the red bag. Here's here's the weirdest thing about it, though, yeah, Byron. I fucking hate green apple flavor. It's but my you least favorite. But the Skittle. But just the Skittle. It's the only green apple. Huh. Well, I also had a lovely conversation with Creature a couple days ago. Out of the blue, she says, Mom, you know... I really love watermelon, mm -hmm. but I hate watermelon flavor. Really? I said, you are my daughter. I'm the opposite. You are my daughter. I like, I like fake watermelon and fake grape and fake cherry, too. See, I like fake cherry, yeah. but I like real right, cherries. This, I hate this conversation. Garrett Ooh. S. Garrett. Also, welcome to the Friday Society. Garrett, it's really nice to see you. With Alex, if we're doing the green Skittles, I suppose we better do... The orange ones for you. Well, I don't actually want him to do that. I do. I want you to really hone in and tell me if there's a flavor difference between the colors of M&Ms. Oddly Where enough, it? who knows? Because I've heard that there is a flavor difference between the white and the pink circus animal cookies. There's something in the pink flavoring that makes it a little bit more yeah, bitter. Yeah, red number 40? Probably. Just a touch of it because it's pink. Right. There's a bit so get to the bottom of that. Huh, okay. Really lean in. All right. Close I'll... your eyes and see if you can guess which flavor is which with a, a partner. It's actually a fun game. Yeah. That's a fun game. Wow. Uh... Nothing, nothing more fun than joining the Fright Day Society. You get great tasks like that. I mean, honestly, a candy assignment is... Get... <laughs> Come on. It's a good assignment. Weekly bonus episodes of Behind the Screams. There's 88 episodes. Can you believe it? 
a couple days worth of, of us talking if you join the, the Friday Society at cult.friday.com. I've been talking to a lot of people about Blonde. Was that main feed? No, it wasn't. That no, was wasn't. that was behind the paywall there. So it was. Can, we got that cinema autopsy about Blonde, which was surprisingly kind of fun. It was fun. And I, I talked to, I mean, I know a lot of people that were um, scared off from watching it. Yeah. And I was talking to my dad and I was like, ah, I mean, it's it's traumatizing. It's dark. But in terms of I can't watch this, I've seen way worse than that. Well, what does that say about this little project? Stuff that Byron makes me watch. All right. Yeah. Uh, lots of episodes of Cinema Autopsy, some bonus episodes of Captain Kelly's Cryptids and Conspiracies, Byron's Serial Corner, The Writer's Room's Back, Toast to Toast PM with Wine Kelly. That That's coming out soon. I'm sure that holiday stress is going to get Kelly... <sighs> Back on the sauce. Well, I tried to do it with Blonde, <laughs> yeah, but, but then I had to drive home because we had to record it in Byron's studio. You can't and I'm, Uber. I really don't. You live out in the woods. And I don't do drinking and driving. I'm no, it's a good pretty idea. hard ass about that one. Yeah, so. I like that. Well, let's uh, close up shop. Make good choices, kids. Great idea, folks. Um, you know what we need to do is a cold brew sampling one of these days. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be fun. Get all buzzy right before recording late at night and never sleep. We could do it as part of Camp Fright Day. You know what I mean? When oh, people yeah. are trying to stay up late because we've got people all over the place. We should do like a cold brew sampling. Halloween season. Not just the holiday, but the, the movie, the film, the unending series. Well, we'll see if it really does end as we review Halloween ends. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying your visit here this evening. Now, on with the show. Halloween Ends is a 2022 American slasher film that is the sequel to Halloween Kills from 2021, the 13th installment in the Halloween franchise, and the One final three. film in the trilogy of sequels that commenced with the 2018 film, which directly follows the 1978 film and disregards all other entries. It's directed by David Gordon Green and written by Green, Danny McBride, remember, Paul, Brad, Logan, and Chris. Lots of folks. Bernier. It's a crowded kitchen there. Yeah. Four years after her last encounter with masked killer Michael Myers, Lori Strode is living with her granddaughter and trying to finish her memoir. Myers has... I'm sorry. <laughs> I started laughing. Oh, the memoir already brought you <laughs> uh, to the giggles? We'll see. Myers hasn't been seen since, and Lori finally decides to liberate herself from rage and fear and embrace life. However, when a young man stands accused of murdering a boy that he was babysitting, it ignites a cascade of violence and terror that forces Lori to confront the evil she can't control. Okay, that was just a weird description because that death that they're referencing happens mm -hmm. years before. Technically f four, right? Is that three. I think three. three? It was 2019. Yeah. yeah, so I think it's three. So we've spoken a bunch about David Gordon Green and his Halloween movies. Uh, October 29th of 2018 in episode 184, we discussed the first Halloween 2018 October 31st, 2021, in episode 295, Halloween Kills. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into the Gordon Green story and not talk about Why? Because we've done it. We talked about well, David. I mean, should you, should you give the cliff notes at least? No. Oh, okay, fine. I don't have those prepared. <laughs> you think that I just know what's going on? Gordon Green, Gordon Green, Gordon Green. You know I've been a David Gordon Green fan for a bit. You know that. Mumblecore film, All the Real Girls, I really enjoyed. Came out in 2003, early Zoe Deschanel. It's got Paul Schneider. He turned out to be bad, right? Paul, he's just like a normal S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R. He's a fine guy, right? Did he do something? I th is that not it's this guy oh yeah i'm sure he is fine sorry i thought Normal we guy. who's the 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 guy that was deuce bigelow rob schneider oh gotcha sorry oh, okay Come all right on. all right you think good. zoe De there's a rom-com drum with rob schneider and I zoe de chanel weird shit has happened all right 2008 pineapple express then he did your highness sitter and then he stopped doing the stupid bullshit comedies stoner comedies yeah, he, 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 stoner well okay comedies. he did prince avalanche which is like a a pretty serious paul rudd film and there's also another guy in it that we don't talk about any anymore 
bitch because he choked a woman. Oh, right, woman. right. So, he went not so cool. He did Joe, which is a great little crime drama uh, the same year. And, you know, a couple other things in between. But then 2018, Halloween, Halloween Kills, Halloween Ends. So kills, it's, kills, it's kills, not kills, the kills, first kills. time that he's worked with Danny McBride. And we've talked about our surprise in Danny McBride's seriousness of the genre. Yeah. And he, Although, I guess it's funny. We there's some giggles he works in. That's true. Sure. But we never we never bring him up when we talk about like comedians doing horror. So Danny McBride was like one of the first. Yeah, but it's more behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. It's not in front of the camera. He does kind of good work. Remember, he was in Alien, uh, whatever that Alien movie was. But Was he in Prometheus? No, it was someone after that. Prometheus Returns. He's the cowboy hat guy in the Alien movie. Prometheus Returns. That's not... It's not true. It wasn't Prometheus Returns? No, he he, uh, was an executive producer on Fat Man, that Mel Gibson Christmas revenge action comedy film. God, Gibson's a bad one. Yeah, but okay. Why did he do that? David Gordon Green, right now, working on a new franchise. Coming out in 2023. I guess we could say this for the end, but we could also talk about it now. Because Danny McBride is also doing... A, he's got a story credit, as well as an executive producer credit. The Exorcist. Really? David Gordon Green is now taking the helm of the Exorcist franchise. Okay, so I'm... Uh, yeah. I don't know, tonight's going to be an interesting discussion. It sure will. Byron, the last... 24 hours have been a roller coaster for me. I, I split this viewing up into two. Interestingly, I did as well, hmm. but I finished it last night and you finished it today. Yeah, just a few minutes ago, actually. Yeah. Kelly, you might you may not care about this, but I have a lot of shame. Um, yeah, well, that's stupid. The, these franchises, when we cover the franchise episodes, I feel like they're a lot more higher stakes. Because people are so into them? Well, yeah, because, I mean, we're supposed to be authorities of horror films that's kind of what we're doing here we're horror hosts but i don't really i'm not an authority of michael myers halloween isn't my thing okay. i haven't seen i haven't seen all the halloween movies and i couldn't tell you even it, within this franch this little three film reboot i don't know if any of the characters that we saw in this film tonight were in the other movies like i couldn't tell you for certain the bartender friend was she in the last movie yeah what happened with her you want to catch me there up? Was a, there was a big scene that went down at the bar. But she became close friends with... I don't know. I mean, I, I, I remember more than you, but I don't remember... You know me. Yeah. I right? Just, uh, so I guess this is my upfront apology, is what I'll consider this. Okay. It's like, if I miss something, I'm sorry. I don't know the Easter eggs of the Halloween <laughs> series. So ap- apologies to, to folks who love these movies. But Kelly, like you said, um, it was a roller coaster... Before we jump into it, what did you think this film was going to be? Because I think when we covered the last one, there was already rumors of what this was. Yeah. So I did not read about what the rumors were, what what this was going to be. I, I didn't get into that at all. Um, well, to be honest, I was unbelievably unexcited going into this because I really friggin hated the last one. Like it, it pushed Hated me it. too. I, I it pushed me too far with Lori. She was too annoying, Proper over Lori. the top. Yeah, it made me sad. Remember when they knocked her out in the hospital for like a good chunk of the movie, and it was like good. Yeah, it, the whole thing just made me really, really sad. Halloween um, Kills. Let's see what Kelly gave Halloween Kills. I mean, you gave it higher than I would expect. You gave it six point six Little John pirate costumes. Oh, I forgot about that yeah. couple. That couple was a redeeming part of that movie. That was nice. I agree. And I gave it six point eight Fireman's axes. Of course, that was a great sequence. It was probably my favorite thing. Uh, Michael Myers uh, single-handedly t- taking down an entire squadron of firemen. It just—it was so over the top and obnoxious, mm-hmm. and I felt like. Anyhow. Yeah. So I wasn't excited. I was not looking forward to this. So it's not as though I knew what it was going to be about or I expected anything other than I expected to really dislike it. Well, I remember teasing this. I don't know if we've talked about it on the show or not. In October of 2021, the director revealed that it would take place four years after the events of Halloween Kills and would incorporate elements of the pandemic into the story. There was something in me, I feel like I discussed this, that I thought that they might go a pseudo-documentary and oh, like interview okay. the town about the aftermath of what happened. Because remember, that was like the, the the absurd town gathering coming together to kill Michael Myers in the last one. Oh, yeah. It was... Kind of set the stage for this possible continued 
I, and I guess that kind of was the theme of this, was Hattonfield in the wake of this awful thing that happened, right? Interestingly, the theme seems to be tied to an idea that Carpenter had at some point earlier. So Is that that evil cannot be well, destroyed, it's just transferred? It's almost like a... Well, it was a specific idea for the trajectory of the franchise. So he did not want to make Halloween 2. Yeah. And Halloween 3 is the only one that has absolutely no Michael Myers. But that it. was kind of the idea that they originally wanted to do with the Halloween he franchise. He wanted it to be an anthology where yeah. like the first one was about Michael, but the rest is the just rest general of them, evil. Like, right, around Halloween. Yeah. Obviously that didn't take, but somewhere Where's in there... Where's the mask guy? Exactly. But somewhere in there, he had this thought that, okay, well, maybe a middle ground is... It's still in Haddonfield, yeah. but it's like this contagion this trauma-based violent contagion and while michael was the source now it's been passed on to someone else and that's the direction that this movie went i don't know how much you're gonna be okay with spoilers there's a point where i, I feel like we could jump into spoilers when, but, i mean unless you want to do it now well like, i don't know if this is a spoiler you tell me but this is very different from the last two movies. You don't get a Michael kill until two thirds of the way through the movie. I think that's probably right, right? Yeah. Halfway point, maybe? Past the, it was past the it halfway was. point. Okay. A long movie, by the way. Too long. I mean, I... Uh, Horror should not be past an hour 30. Byron, when I finished this movie last night, yeah. when I got to the halfway point the night before, I was like, this is so weird it just feels weird like what are they doing this the tone feels weird everything i'm allowing this just because it's special it is special that, that's month. very annoying it's beautiful i hate the chimes you're so fucking weird and then last night i watched it and i was like okay like i can see some of this and there's some interesting points after i finished it i was pretty meh and i percolated on it mm -hmm. and i read some stuff today yeah and i have come around kind of really like this okay. movie all right very interesting and if we're going to start at the beginning i think we should start by saying the opening sequence to this movie there's no way you didn't love that loved it yeah it was great who are we introduced to right off the Corey. bat? Corey. Corey, new character new character rhymes with laurie does rhyme Stupid. with laurie fucking right off the bat i hate that i love that you even noticed that i didn't notice that it's dumb that's not cool i mean I write a better fucking story guys i, I don't know i thought it was fine um, that's that but was he's babysitting some shithead kid on the night of 2019 so this was three yeah. years ago the year after the 2018 halloween sure. the year after the first david gordon green yeah this kid is a shithead and this kid locks him in the attic and he's freaking out, and the kid's yelling that Michael's going to get him. Everybody's still terrified in town about Michael. Right? Well, and I mean, Corey, he's like a bit of a scaredy cat, even though he's trying to put on a brave face. Well, when, he was watching The Thing. He was watching The Thing, with, yeah, with a little kid. Yeah. Don't know why the kid is such a jerk. Yeah, because... Solid wood doors in that house, though. He was an entitled little fucker. Yeah. But he, the kid won't let him out, and he's freaking out. Parents come home. It's very much a scream situation. Right. I did like the nod to scream, where the folks come home right at the time that this traumatic event is about to happen. Yep. Because Corey's kicking down the door in the, not an attic, just a dark room upstairs. Yep. The door flings open right as soon as the parents come inside the home. Door hits the kid. They're upstairs. It's a nice little windy staircase in that it's house. It's like Three Eight stories? Floors? I don't uh, even... It was so many stories. Well, either way, the kid falls kind of like in our good friend Brandon Christensen's movie. It actually did remind yeah. me of that. That's a good point. Kid fucking slams. Oh, bam. Messed up. And I loved it. He was like broken in pieces. It was... It, that was pretty incredible. A lot of blood. Very violent. His head whipped back. <laughs> remember when he hit and half his body bounced up? I do remember wow. that. Wow. I'm excited about this film yeah. suddenly. It was pretty brutal. Yeah. But the kid gets a bad rap. Right, because clearly the kid didn't do this. Well, and he also had a knife in his hand. He had a knife in his hand because the kid had convinced him that Michael Myers was in the house. Yep. And it spooked him. And so he had grabbed a knife uh, that was laying out to investigate upstairs Some because he was worried that Michael had taken the kid. Some could argue that Michael was in the house that night. Yes. Because which the is town kind of, of Hattonfield... Has been infected. The so darkness. That's the pandemic. Yeah. Right. Is that what they were saying? Oh, my God. How did I just get that? I mean, I don't know. I, I a little worried about you. I tried you. to black out most of that. 
That's interesting because like they show clips later of people killing themselves. Some people went missing. Hmm, wonder what happened there. But also just oh, like, has been in town. I gotta go. Yeah. General awfulness is happening in Hattonfield. Bad attitudes. People turning against each other. Yeah. You know? Corey, a few years later, he's gotten off. Because it was a whoopsie. Well, yeah, but as is par for the course in horrible modern society. Um, Kid can't get a break. Not at all. The most eclectic group of teens I've seen in a bit. So Sam and I were cracking up the about the fact that going on? now the cool bully kids are in the marching band? Yeah, what? What? I was so confused when by that. When did this happen? Like the, the one guy's got like a varsity jacket on. But it's like, a varsity jacket for, for marching. marching. I don't know why they're Which like, don't get me wrong. Heads. I think that's cool. Yeah. It's just those historically have not been the kids that are bullying. Okay, and maybe this, have we jumped past anything? I guess, I mean, there's a little bit of Lori and her granddaughter before that. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, Lori, she's mellowed out a bit. And when did she yell? What was that quote? Something about tits. Yeah. All I know is it was They do like a, a weird like little smash cut with her hands. Was she, what was she doing? I was don't it pumpkin know. insides? Probably. It was just goofy. Yeah. It could be totally off. It felt like a drum comedy for, off the Disney Channel or something. It, it felt really weird. And Lori basically tries to set her granddaughter up with this misunderstood young man who's been ostracized by the community much the same way that their family has been. You mean been. Lori and Corey? They got I, you're something so in common? weird about this. I don't you're very weird. It's just heavy handed to make the two characters who have this this thing in common being ostracized by the city. They, I guess. It's a little heavy handed. But uh, yeah, Allison played by Andy Matichek. Yes. Yeah, she's back. I remember her. Yep. Andy is also kind of just getting over the loss. They never even really address that. Her mother got brutally killed by Michael Myers in the last movie. I mean, movie. we saw a little clip of Spring Break Woo, but <laughs> I think this is a repeated problem with this film for me is no one is really fully explained. Which is why I argue this actually wasn't too long. It was too short. Uh, well. We needed a lot more. You need a tighter story or you need two movies. Yeah. I. Which I A was, lot of the writers involved, the writers, directors involved with this have done miniseries before. That's true. Dana McBride and East Bound and Down. Yeah. Vice Principals. Righteous Gemstones. I think this would have been way better as that. Probably. I mean, it probably would have. Yeah. I think if they had gone with the ability to really, because I actually kind of dug the relationship that was at the core of this. I thought it was interesting. It actually reminded me of... Like Corey and Andy? Yeah. Or it, not, what's her real name? It reminded... Uh, Allison. Yeah. It, it reminded me of um, Natural Born Killers it a little did bit. did have that energy. Or True Romance, if you were going to be less like over the top about it. But I talked to you on the phone a little bit ago. It felt a little rushed because I couldn't tell if they had a past. Like, in, I think it was pretty obvious that they didn't, but they acted as if they had this electric connection from we needed we needed more i yeah, needed more i needed more and i was also before we get past the the kids which also really weird it like, is weird the dorky like nice girl in that yeah no really development whatsoever no about why she is this more tender of I the think, four and it's well, like why she's spending time with them they you weren't know? those characters were nothing more than placeholders and i think they could have been cool i think there was something they could have done with it but yeah it did not well, go remember that in 2018 when allison had like two or three friends very similar to the original halloween yep those characters were developed that's true and they true, also had a group of three kids in that that went to the park remember see, yeah but or was that in the the second one Either way, these characters were further developed than this group of misfits. Fair, fair. Because who knows if they're misfits? <laughs> I don't know. I guess that is true. I, I know they love picking on this adult man for some reason. Yeah, which is part of the contagion. Sure. Okay. Okay. Like I guess I didn't associate that. At everybody's that point infected. Because... All infected right. with meanness. It was. It actually weird. reminds me of that new documentary that's out about Barney. Oh, I've heard about like that. Like how I, we I just you, need you something hate to me hate or something. Is that... Yeah, it's like this idea that society and humanity just is dying to hate. Well, I haven't seen that, but I can imagine that people. When they see something pure and good, they get jealous and react negatively to it because they're wondering, why is he so happy? Or why does he bring so much joy to everyone else? Right. Is that kind of the... Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. This, this, the, It just felt like... It felt rushed, but yep. also slow. 
Yeah, I almost sent you some of the stuff that I read and listened to today. Sure. So that you could hear it yourself before we talk tonight. That would have been helpful. I don't know. Instead, I actually decided it would be better for you to get your thoughts down, and then I'm going to send this to you and tell you to listen I'm not to read it. it. I'm not going to. Listen and read the stuff that I send because it really does add a lot of dimension to what's going on. My favorite theory, Byron, is uh -huh. that this was supposed to be the original movie. The, oh, okay. This trilogy from David Gordon Green You're is this supposed should to should have been the second. Movie. Well, right, it should have been the technically the third if you count the third as the second. No, I'm saying that this would have been a perfect movie for the first in the trilogy. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. So like rather yeah. than continuing on with this annoying Lorian shape shit, like immediately sure. go like this is the transition to open, go a different open direction. It a open bit. it up. Well, Rob Zombie tried that in the second of yeah. his reboot and it got too big. Yeah, it did. But that's because Zombie's a fucking idiot. No, but I don't know. Like this, I actually really like in terms of it going a new direction. Now there were some tonal weirdness or we there was some we didn't tonal talk about weirdness. the memoir yet. The, the memoir was cheesy, but still, like, Lori during this movie was so much more so tolerable. Much oh, my God. Did they listen to me? They listened. Yeah, maybe. Maybe everyone was screaming, Get what the fuck is Prepper Lori? It was awful. It was so awful. It didn't make any sense because that wasn't her character in the first. The scene with her and the gun and the pumpkin was, like, a little over the top. Well, But that yeah. was as bad as it got. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's, like, that's at the end, right? Is yeah. that the one you're talking about? Yeah. The rest of it, I was like, okay, I can live with this. I can deal with this. But how, And could, I actually liked the fact that she was showing empathy to this Corey kid and was like... Well, or what about her relationship with the sheriff? Like, did you like that? I, I that did cute? like that. I it thought was, it was really cute. It was kind of cute. I thought it was really I cute. I did like that they, they had like a supermarket version instrumental of Don't Fear the Reaper when they yeah. were inside the supermarket. That was cool. But yep. also stuff like that makes you kind of suspend disbelief it puts you in a more surreal place which i think is yep. almost the better place to be with this movie yeah because it's weird like it it's weird. really an odd film it's weird but when you start leaning into i think what you're pointing at more than anything which is this infection the plague of darkness yep. that's in hattonfield yeah when you approach it, it it's weird because it's not it's either all or nothing most of the time and this film, I think, puts you kind of back on your heels when mm -hmm. you're not really sure what the heck it's trying to say. Yeah. So maybe on a second viewing, this is more enjoyable once you quit looking for what it is, I guess. I'm actually really excited to rewatch it after listening to what I listened to and reading what I read. I went from being just annoyed with this movie. Now, even in my annoyance... I still liked it more than the last one. Okay. But now, I... It's weird that I you're actually, really leaning into this. I think I really like it. Oh, no. I think I really like it. Uh, it does There's look, some things I would change. Okay. One of those? Corey's name. I'll give you that. No. I think Corey's background would have been... Not a ton more clear, but like a smidge more clear. I liked that it was a little bit mysterious. But usually if someone does a big thing, like act like the, his mother was so over the top. Okay, but this it's funny because you mentioned this to me earlier too. You saw what happened right towards the end, right? With his mom that made it really clear what was going on with his mom the whole time. I figured you'd miss this. I probably didn't pick up on that. Yeah, there it was incest is what was going on. Oh God, really? Yeah. Why? What she when say? She, right at the end, when he's like ready to take off for good. Uh huh. She like tries to make out with him. How did I miss? That? I don't know, but it's it's exactly it's so funny because when I saw it, sometimes I sometimes I don't look. I know, and when I, I literally Byron, when that scene happened, I'm like, Byron's gonna miss There's this. There's no way. I know he's Byron's gonna miss this. <laughs> His head is down. Yep. And um, so that wow. okay. that made it a little bit more clear. And yeah. I actually like the way that that stuff was unveiled. Is a stepdad, like a kind of a cuck. I don't know. What Maybe the heck's going on? Because really... their relationship was weird too. Also, was it the stepdad or was it just the dad? It was. Uh, Wiki says it's stepdad. Stepdad. Okay. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Wow. Okay, that's dark and kind of unnecessary. I don't know. Again, like, 
for some reason, even though I hate Rob Zombie, I've accepted his version of Michael's background as canon. You kind of have at this point. And so if we're accepting that as canon, then this is aligned with... Sure. his background wow okay. like of having like a traumatic home life well cory yeah we i don't know if we want to get into the cory thing because i feel like that opens an, on another conversational door about I mean, all just sorts all of, of this stuff yeah. do you want to do it real quick what did you think about the shape being in the sewer okay it's time for dead giveaways <laughs> Because that's my favorite thing. This is the point in the show where we spoil part of a movie. Uh, go check this thing out. It's on Peacock, everyone. Go sign up for Peacock. That's the first time we've ever said that on this show. Peacock! I think it's got 60 days where it's available on Peacock and then it's gone. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, okay. I think that's how they're doing that over there. But uh, what was he doing in the sewer? <laughs> Hiding for four years? Yeah. Yeah. Which I actually kind of, like, that's creepy to think about. It's a little Pennywise. It's a little, it's a clown. It's just weird. And the way that it unfolds, when Corey gets, you know, basically beat to shit by these asshole kids, youths, thrown off a bridge, the band, they... he may or may not be dead, and he wakes up and he kind of suddenly realizes he's being drug. Yeah. And he finds himself in this sewer, sewer tunnel. Yeah. He comes to and is trying to get out and stops and sees the, the shape. shape. Michael Myers. Yeah. And it reaches through to choke him. But connection, connection, eye contact. And he's got this cut on his hand. Okay. That almost becomes not even metaphorical, but it almost seems literal, like the entry point for the transference of evil from sure. Michael. I mean, there was no lightning bolts. There wasn't any like weird. No, but it, there's it, kind of a flickering of traumatic events, I guess. Yeah. That, that go through. This reminded me a lot of Friday the 13th, A New Beginning, which is the fifth in the Friday the 13th franchise. Uh, and I haven't seen that. Well, I, I, it's been a long time since I've seen it. I just know that this is the one where, uh, you know, Jason is dead. Spoiler, double spoiler alert. This is where uh, Jason is actually Roy Burns. You're so far past me right now. It's just that Jason is someone else. Jason that, isn't Jason. No, Jason the isn't Jason. The owls are not what they seem. But he was inspired by jason's killing sprees and he went and son after his he went insane after his son's death and also tried to get revenge the same way pamela Voorhees did in the first movie okay so it's like a i guess it's almost like a scream film too where the killing's inspired but also you don't know if it's this actual evil transfer or if it yeah yeah and this felt pretty literal and then the rest of the movie becomes this interesting stop the homeless guy because because he's evil because he th- seemed regretful right. briefly right it's like um think about it as like a werewolf okay sure. okay yeah yeah mid transformation right like he's bouncing back and forth and not only does michael transfer that but i think the gist is that the way that the town has treated him you know he's the barney yeah right and, and at this point he's had it he's fed up right he's fed up and he's broken and if you treat somebody like they're a villain for long enough they're probably going to become a villain okay so this is the point where i started taking notes and i took notes in the form of quotes for the most part oh, so boy, here maybe we go. we'll kind of jump through it and okay. i'll just get your opinion on these i'm things. worried a little worried um, all right first comment is i love a mid-sized town radio dj I love all the WURG stuff. Did you notice that that started from the very get-go of the movie? It was in this movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. There was two se- sequences in the beginning. That, that, that. And then but eventually like, we end up at the station. The audio from the opening. It was cool. Was that yeah. station. I love yeah, it. Yeah. That was amazing. Loved okay. it. Okay. Allison, ha- her cop ex-boyfriend. What the fuck was the deal with that? He's like 45 years old. I don't even think he was an ex-boyfriend. I think they went on like a, a date. date. Yeah. Was the impression that I got. Well, but it just felt weird. I, Agreed. I, I was like, is he supposed to be young? But then, like, he's at the party at the diner and all the other cop friends are, like, the same age or older than him. I just, I didn't quite understand what they were trying to get with that. I mean, I think it was this idea of, like, a small town. There aren't a ton of options. She had gone on dates with a few people. This and was somebody probably she went on a date probably with. Probably connected with him because of the crimes that happened right. to her family. And, like clearly had no interest if it was like a dewey aged character you know dewey from like the early 
screen yeah. movies. You know, if it was a more age appropriate match, maybe even handsome deputy instead of this guy that just looked old and weird. Well, and to me, it wasn't that he looked old or weird that mattered. It was that she very clearly wasn't interested yeah. and he was very clearly not giving a shit that she wasn't interested. I mean, he, he pulled her over to flirt with her and like catch up. Which, right. I mean, in, in it, it's funny because if that was like a, her a mutual thing, it would have been kind of cute. a cute thing. But her reaction wasn't ambiguous. No, you're right. It was very clear. When you're making a movie like this, I shouldn't be asking more questions. It's already thick with lore. It's very thick. I don't need Lori. this. Corey. <laughs> Burn it all to the ground. I'll be the match at the diner. That's when he turns into dark Corey. I mean, he killed a man. Already, right. But, but he keeps, he kind of, did, but he kills somebody and then he freaks out and then he yeah, kills somebody he's again. Dead. He's ready and to he's be really the match. freaking out. And then he's like, finally he settles into it. But why is Allison like, okay with this? Because she's, it's catching on too. And she doesn't know that he's killing like she knows that the first death happened yeah. and that he was like freaked out by it. So of she's course. not associating him with being a sociopath. Yeah, but he's like acting very well. And that was my other problem, which I had is why did they have such a, a magnetic connection after like seemingly not anything? Because they had both been broken by this town. They're trauma bonded, I suppose. They're trauma bonded and they're also both complete outsiders for reasons that were totally outside their control. I just needed more. I needed to I know needed what she found. I want to rewind. <laughs> okay. I would like to rewind and make this the first movie in the Gordon Green Great. trilogy. Sure. I don't know the podcaster stuff. Up. Remember the spooky, like the, the psychiatric hospital with the checkerboard. They can throw some of those pieces in. That's yeah, fine. The teeth. He drops all those fucking teeth in the That's stall. Fine. That we was can awesome. Throw those pieces Loved in. Loved it. Mix like, I don't know, pick maybe 45 minutes from the first two movies. Yeah. Add an hour to this movie. Split it into three films. That's my suggestion. Like, we have to keep the Little John Pirate guys. 100%. I think that they tried to recreate Little John Pirates with the doctor and the new whatever doctor's okay, no, assistant. Okay, no, they were awful. They were trying, but remember, she goes into his house and she they has were... the, the line, this house is so rich. Like, they are utterly but, unlikable. That was terrible. No, I'm saying they tried to do this and oh, okay. failed. See, I miserably. thought they were just, like, more people that could get killed off that we actually wanted to die so it wasn't yeah. going to be bad i mean they needed to do more of that yeah one cool thing they brought back though was that surviving victim from the last film the one who had the light rod shoved in her throat oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i yeah, wish i wish cool. i mean it was sad it was sad it really kind of bummed Lori out well because her sister was like it's your fault yeah i thought that was a little weird the sudden pivot to well, you're she, the she one was having like a Mayberry moment in the grocery store, talking to the sheriff, like everything was kind of resolved. She no, had just but, finished her memoir almost. But multiple like, people in this movie are pushing back and telling her, like, it's your fault that you all of this shit this happened. To the town. Right. She was a victim. Right. They're, they're like victim blaming. And don't get me wrong, she was annoying in the last movie. I agree, she like, deserves this. But it didn't make a lot of sense the yeah. way that she was being raked across the coals. And I think that cut the doctor and whatever that lady was, like it, it felt yeah. oddly tonally off. Yes. Like, even her conversations with Allison at the hospital. Right. Totally I mean, unnecessary. Other than to further establish that the people in this town have just lost any moral tether whatsoever. Yeah. Like she didn't give a shit what she was saying. It wasn't like she was intentionally evil, but she didn't care that what she was saying was wildly insensitive and mean to Allison. Allison. It yeah. was just weird. You know, I guess that they were examples of how off the rails things were in the town. It wasn't but... off the rails enough, though. It felt... I, I, could, I, I could see that. Uh, I wrote this quote down, but I think it makes a little bit more sense now that you told me that she was uh, fucking her son. Yep. I, I hope you find love. I think she told him. In... No, he told the, the stepfather did. Oh, stepfather said is that. Is that right? Uh-huh. Okay. It was actually really cute. Was it during that conversation? It was right after his mom tried to make out with him. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know how I missed that. Yep. Yep. Weird, well, there though. you go. Uh, October 31st. Big moments. And also, we didn't mention all the very cool blue titling. You know what somebody brought up? What? Do you know what other movie had the blue titling? I don't. Probably three, right? Three. Yeah. yeah. The only other one with the blue titling, which was like, obviously, this is supposed to be different in kind of the same way that that one was different. Wow. That's interesting. Isn't that cool? I love it. And even like the opening sequence with the pumpkins coming out of the pumpkins. Mm -hmm. That was fun. I mm -hmm. thought that was really cool. They've done a great job of bringing in the nostalgia. I think David Gordon Green did a wonderful job of doing that. I agree. 
it's Halloween. You started this. You invited me in. If I can't have her, no one will. Yeah, which so now we've gone fully into like creepy, abusive partner. But what's weird about this is no one does anything. What do you mean? No one does anything with their suspicion of like. Again, I think that that makes sense we've in the aban- context. We've of abandoned it. the reality of Hattonfield having any sort of justice or well, law. Well, yeah, I mean, look at look at what it comes to. Eventually, but at that point, like, I, I, I agree that it comes to that, but like... No, that's not justice or law, what it comes well, to. No, that's I'm like saying... That's like the I'm furthest... Saying, I'm saying the resolution shows more obviously what the reality of the situation in the town was, but like, at that point, there's n- nothing to believe. Why wouldn't Lori call his parents? Why wouldn't she call the police? Why wouldn't she have a real conversation she does. with Allison about this she, guy? She does. Remember, she goes over to talk to the mom. Oh, she does. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's fine. That's good. This is good. My head's up. But did they have a... I mean, they have I mean, a, you're kind of experiencing the same thing I did, which was like, I wrote off so much of this and then slowly have like, I don't know, gone through different pieces. Oh, well, actually... It just didn't seem at all grounded in reality, but it sat on the edge of it, which kind of made me uncomfortable. I get the uncomfortable thing. The tone was really weird for me. The tone is feeling much better in retrospect than it did during. I think there's there's clarity that I found. Is this going to be the Halloween 3 of the remakes? Like, this is going to be the one that a few years later people come to and are like, you know, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, I mean, people are obviously very divided on it. It seems like Anybody that liked the original or liked the first two... I don't think is going to like this one. Probably not. Just so happens that I fucking hated <laughs> the last one and didn't care too terribly much for it. Yeah. Well, you gave it a six, but I mean, you give everything a six. So. Right, right. I, unless there's, you know. Junkyard scene. Mm, that was interesting. It's like they were like, we need more bodies. Is that kind of the vibe? Yeah, I guess. The marching band goes to the junkyard to confront Corey, which was confusing to me like they were confronting him because i mean there was like a i know what you did last summer moment when they thought he might be dead yeah and now because he wasn't dead they're mad Mad? and so now they threw a guy off a bridge and now oh he he scratched on their car hood oh that's right (laughs) but still like i mean it was it was weird weird it was weird and then for some reason Corey's stepdad is still at the junkyard it gives the lead guy a gun who just like blows off the head of the guy for like, like that was really one of the few moments there are a couple people in this movie mm-hmm. that display empathy and compassion sure. yeah and it does not go well for there wasn't them. a lot of tension in this moment though there was oh, some cool, I thought it there was, was really some cool quick. there was some cool brutal kills but there was no like tension or release like at i thought all. it was very quick but i don't know that there wasn't tension hmm I don't know. Maybe there was. I might need to revisit it. I did like like the blowtorch to the mouth thing. I did like the girl getting pinned under the fence when she was trying to climb over it. I thought that was really cool. When the truck hit the fence and pinned her into the ground. Yeah, I thought that was too. That was cool. Yep, um, yep, I agree. It was just a sequence for killing. But the line, uh, Stacy's dead, you're dead too. That was my favorite. That was You like that? Oh, it, it was... When the girl pinned under oh, the it fence. Was, it was absurd. It As was, the guy says, Stacy's dead to her. And then she you're says, you're dead too. You're dead too. <laughs> and then Michael Myers kills. Yep. I mean, it was hilarious. It was ridiculous. Yeah. I guess we haven't really talked about Corey and Michael's uh, tag teaming at all. Right. So at first you think like, okay, is this going to be a buddy film now? Like, okay. are they like partnering up? Yeah. And then you realize that no, Michael's like not fucking pleased with He's what this dude's mentor, doing. kind of a mentor, right? Kind well, of. I think... Corey wants him to be. Sure. And then Michael's like, actually, no, you're the kid that I don't want. Go the fuck away. Corey attacks the cop and then mm-hmm. takes him into the tunnel mm-hmm. earlier on in this. He's I'd... like, show me how you do it. Basically. Mm-hmm. But like Michael stabs the cop while he's on top of him, holding him down. But important to note. Yeah. Whereas normally Michael stabs all the way through. He didn't he stab didn't. through Corey. No, he, he was. He was must have been deliberately avoiding because he's a hard stabber. He's a very hard stabber. Guy stabs hard. He's super hard. So this is just, it was really kind of an, um, it's a its a Bambi walking for the first time on ice moment. Yeah. He's trying really hard to 
I guess, and I don't know why, all of a sudden he's got this urge to kill. Again, spirit, the spirit of Michael Myers attacking the city, spreading like a virus. But um, Lori's trying to convince him that he has a choice and he sure. doesn't have to go that way with it and it's going to be okay. And he yeah. just has to, pretty soon he's gone full walrus. I mean, and there's the DJ sequence, which again, I feel like there's something on the cutting room floor. I agree. There was, that was totally... There was more that needed to happen there. Um, but then Lori... We're at the house. I don't know. I think we actually do kind of need to walk through this whole thing. Do we need to d- to do the... Double spoiler alert. Okay. But I'm not going to say the stuff. Just give me a heads up. Did you really think I'd kill myself sequence? What the fuck was that? Well... Lori... So she was setting him rep- up and she was setting the audience up because I think, you know, we're all looking at this as we know this is the last movie that Lori is going to be in. Probably. And, hopefully. Yeah, please. Hopefully. And we're waiting to see what happens does michael kill her and then what i mean i fell for it like when she makes that I didn't call know why though and i might well, have she was really upset else. because like, she she was unable to stop Corey. okay and she knew that her granddaughter was screwed she was unable to stop she was desperately in love with this right man. and it was her fault after four days or whatever and she it was just too much she couldn't handle it and that was it you know, and I don't know, given like how unhinged she's been in these three movies, I it totally it, it fell for matter. it. Well, no. I, I, my heart skipped a bit. Oh, I yeah. Was, I was worried for it, but yeah. I was like, oh, my God, but this is what she's going to do. I think it was confusing. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Did I miss something? Like, oh, it, why? Makes, it made sense to me. Yeah. But then you realize that, it was oh, a trap. yeah, it was just a trap. But the shooting the pumpkin was pretty funny. I, I guess, yeah. In, in lieu of her head, Michael enters the room only to see the remains of a pumpkin that had been shot with right. a pistol. And then it's, you know. Something, something motherfucker, I imagine, right? Yes. Come and get me, motherfucker? Yeah. You didn't think I'd... You didn't, you didn't think really I'd... think I'd kill myself, is yeah. what she said. She doesn't yeah. say motherfucker, but it's implied. No, but but Buster Rhymes does. Yes, of course. And then it, it kicks off this kind of extended fight sequence. And I got to say, I don't think I give a shit about extended fight sequences. I hate them in Marvel movies. I don't like them in this kind of thing either. Like eh. this sort of back and forth thing. I mean, thing. it was a throwback to the um, garbage disposal hand thing, which yeah. was, it, you know. Did she get nicked? It sounded like she got nicked in the tips there. I don't know. I thought that maybe she did, but then it pivoted so quickly. I stopped thinking about whether she did because we were already onto something else. Can we figure out like what? his strength level is can that be consistent because i've seen him like break arms or like pull out people's well, it's teeth like, like, i feel like he was regaining strength over the course of the last third of this movie as he, he was killing people it was like when he was in the tunnel rats rats only and maybe homeless people too that sure. was implied i don't know it seemed weird and i also heard that david gordon green not only split up the shooting of the fight sequence throughout the course of the initial shoot but Bye. also they went and did another scheduled two weeks of reshoots because of something wrong with this but they only shot for four days they had a scheduled two weeks only did four days there was some sort of quote about him saying that there are still continuity errors in the fight sequence in the fights oh just in the fight sequence yeah. okay well maybe, well maybe across the entire flick but yeah Imagine if they would have went through their initial plan of shooting the last two movies back to back at the same time. That was a, that was their original idea was to do kills and ends at the same shoot schedule. I mean, again, I just I want to restructure the entire thing. Okay. I need to back up to 2018 and just have a complete different approach to what happened here. Obviously, Lori gets the upper hand. Weird, really? weird that she thinks that she can just pin Michael to a butcher block countertop with, oh with butcher's knives. That was kind of weird. Did yeah. anyone see what happened last time? Or the time before. Yeah. Or the time before, or the time before, or the uh-huh. time before, or the time before. There was a movie, well, I guess this technically, remember, it went original to these three. But there was a movie in the middle where he got pinned to the ground with an ambulance and she cut off his head with a with an axe. Oh, that one he switched out the body with an EMT. Never mind. They revealed that in the next movie. I thought, because like it appeared that she chopped his oh, head off with an yeah, axe. Yeah. It was the dead body of an EMT yeah, person. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Either that's way, right. what leads her to think that a butcher's knife is going to hold him to the ground? She has stabbed this... I mean, she knows. She built a fucking trap house. She was Jigsaw last movie. She was. That 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 didn't work for me too terribly much. That's and then, fair. And then things got kind of woo-woo. I mean, I've chased you. I've tried to contain you. I've tried to forgive you. I don't know where she did that. I thought oh, maybe... Oh, this whole movie was her trying to, like, let this go. This was her forgiveness? Yeah. I mean, the first was part, she was memoir? a very, like, peaceful, like, 
letting go yeah. zone in the beginning. I, I thought maybe you were the boogeyman. No, you're just a man who's about to stop breathing. And then uh, stabs yeah. him in the heart, which she's done a million times. A million times. Oh, but they, they went further finally with this one. Yeah. And I guess oh, we did, did kind of skip over the Corey's. Corey also tried to kill Lori and Lori killed Corey. But Allison saw that Lori killed Corey and turned on her grandma. Right. But bri- then, briefly. But then started to recover. I don't know. Now that Lori was taking away some of the shape's power, the, the contagion was dying back. Because Lori killed Corey. Right. Allison saw that Lori killed Corey. Right. And so Allison initially was really upset, but then started to understand, like, no, actually... It's okay. Like, this is what you should have done. I know that he did this. I know that this was bad. I don't know what I was thinking. It's like, yeah, but she kind of comes out of the, whatever trance she was in. But what in this journey led Lori to think that the shape was just a man? There was nothing to change her idea of that. I don't know. She, what do you well, mean? That was the whole thing, is that she, you're just a man who's about to stop breathing. What made her think that, that the shape was a man? Well, like, I mean, you know. He's it's... still terribly supernatural. Yeah, I agree. And, th- and that is complex i suppose but yeah he rips his hand open (laughs) and tries to strangle her the fact that he has michael's mask trying to embody michael but he really is just a poser at the end of the day and michael traipses across town out of the the sewers of billy loomis it is a little bit i suppose (laughs) oh no he traipses across and manages to get his mask back and then it's time for the adults to talk yeah okay i guess well, speaking of adults talking let's talk about what allison says when she re-enters the kitchen and sees that her grandmother is being actively strangled by michael myers she says i'm not going to let this happen to you well, yeah because you yeah, but what <laughs> come okay. on okay i know that at this point it sounds like i'm just making excuses yes for everything. that's a bizarre thing to say upon entering a kitchen it is but also She's coming out of like this weird You're making magical zone that excuses. she was in. Yeah. She was in this weird, super freakish zone <sighs> because of, you know, the contagion. And then mm-hmm. what about her stepping in allowed Michael to die by a, a wrist cut versus a, a heart stab? Oh, well, because they like opened up his veins. Yeah, but he got stabbed in the heart. That's where the... That's where all the... Yeah, but he could still... <laughs> Come on. I mean, all of it was gone then. It was a it was a but, power of two coming in. But he wasn't dead enough yet. So yeah. they strapped him to the top of a car. Well, they sure did because did it's this... time for Hattonfield to start healing, Kelly. Yeah. So they do this super weird... Hattonfield came together. Like, and did almost like a Christmas story. Vigilante through the town funeral procession of Michael... And then put him in a grinder. Well, yeah. They put him in the, which I guess is just a metal grinder at a, the at the salvage place. Oh, Kelly, gross. why is your face turning? This is where I like was like, okay, I get it. Like, <laughs> I understand this movie now. This is insane. Lori's standing with the entire town behind her. <laughs> and we're just. And, yeah. Uh, because she does want Hattonfield to start healing. Yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah, it is the whole point. And they throw his body into a thing that gets mushed up. And he gets mushed. And that's cool. That's pretty cool. Um, but there's no fucking way that Michael's dead. Well, yeah, because evil doesn't die. It just changes shape. Yeah. Wink. The shape. The shape. Trademark. Yeah. That's the flick, though, right? I know it's weird, Byron. I want you to percolate like I did. I- uh, four hours after finishing it, which is about where you're sitting right now. Yeah. I didn't like it. Okay. I didn't like it. I need to sleep on this. 24 hours after finishing it? I'm digging it. <sighs> okay. I like it. Well, okay. let's hit me I with like those highs it. and lows, huh? High point for me was the transformation from Corey into... I, I thought he acted that really well. The back and forth and... It, it did. It felt like an, a prolonged werewolf transformation to me. I, I like the sequence when he and she are on the motorcycle. I like, you know me, I don't like the 80s, but it felt very much like... It was just like Top Gun. It's because you really got into Top Gun recently. Know, That's I'm what a, it was. You got that divorced dad syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling it. Yeah. It, it said a lot in that yeah. quick little shot. That yeah. was like the, f- the, the, the lean in. I could totally understand yeah. that. I don't know. And my low point was you're dead too. You're I mean, like, it was hilarious. I thought you said that like, was your favorite part. Well, in the sense that it was just patently absurd. Yeah. But it, it, 
did not serve the things that I actually enjoyed about the movie. Well, I, I think this film is too long. Too short. You it mean was to too say long. too short. Well, I mean, it's too long. Too short, too short, but too short. I, I really appreciate how they somehow... God, I was such a vocal critic of Prepper Laurie. I thought it was destroying mm -hmm. the franchise, and I was embarrassed for Jamie Lee Curtis and upset mm -hmm. at David Gordon Green. Yes. They somehow redeemed Laurie Strode. They found a way to make her appropriately prepared to handle the shape yep. in a way that wasn't uh, destroying her legacy from the first movie. I agree. Somehow this film felt more like a Scream movie than any of the other ones in this series. I could, I could see that. And I love that about it. It's a great thing to me personally. I hope that doesn't offend Halloween stands in the audience. Yeah, but they'll be fine. At the same time, don't care. Um, in the end, though, it felt, I'm saying this again, it felt too long and also not enough. There was so many threads and so many characters in this that I, I kept questioning the motives. And I understand that if you put the blanket of this magical evil across the entire film, it's a better way to look at it. Yes. But so it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. But I do agree, Kelly, after talking about this with you, it, it definitely is... It's, it's better it's, it's than fun. you thought it was. But could I you swear, see this you in wait. a theater? Like, I mean, I'm glad we saw it on Peacock. But like... This isn't the quality. Like this oh, is see now I okay, now that I watched it on Peacock and we've talked through it, now I want to go see it in the theater. You think it I mean it's a yeah. It's on the edge of being a midnighter, you know? It's I, that I'd go weird. see it in the theater. Yeah. I, I would. Well, for all those reasons, I guess you could check it out. It did make its budget back. I think it got sixty thousand or sixty million, pardon me. Um that's only about a tenth of what Alex Jones owes the families of the Sandy Hook victims. Wow. I hope that that man... Uh, the, I, I give Halloween ends 7.0 motorcycles for my stepdad. Oh, that was a Corey. That was a sweet moment when the that stepdad noticed his son, stepson, pardon me, was running late because he's on that bike. Mm -hmm. Gives him a motorcycle. Yeah, it was really cute. Yeah. I don't know, you guys. I like it. Maybe by tomorrow I will have changed my mind again, but this has been an interesting journey for me. I am going to kind of pseudo ignore the last two David Gordon Green movies and just try to lock Halloween ends into my brain because I think this is what it should have been. I wish that I had another hour of that film. I want to see what was on the cutting room floor. I really do. I want to see the rest of it. I bet they give us a four hour director's cut. Hopefully. I could see that. Hopefully. For all those reasons, I give Halloween Ends 7.9 plastic scarecrow masks. And those are our thoughts on Halloween Ends, which, again, available on Peacock or in theaters. Wee wee wee. Go check it out. Do you think it's going to end? No. Mm -mm. John Carpenter think doesn't it, think so either. I think it might be the end of Laurie. It is, well, that could be interesting. It is most definitely the end of the David Gordon Green ones. And actually, the re the rights have now reverted away from Blumhouse back to the original producer. So fascinating. There's, n I mean, there's very much a possibility of this not being the end end, but it's the end of this chapter. Kind of okay. like the Christopher Nolan Batman movies is kind of how I view this. Like, you know, he did the three. Except for the Christopher Nolan Batman movies were all really fucking good. You know, Batman didn't stop. We got Bat Bat Batfleck or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. The Ben Affleck one. So, yeah. and uh, I think they're, I mean, whatever, Robert Pattinson Batman. That was fun. Remember that? Yeah. Kurt Cobain Batman. Yeah, I've never seen it. Oh, you got to check it out. I will. I will eventually. John Carpenter says, uh, I mean, the goal was to end the franchise, but if something makes money, it's hard for studios to wrap things up for good. Quote, let me explain the movie business to you. If you take a dollar sign and attach it to anything, there will be somebody who wants to do a sequel. It will live. If the dollar sign is not big enough, no matter what, it will not live, he said in an interview with comicbook.com. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. This time, I don't know. I do not know. They really want to end. They're going to shut it off, end it. That's what David had in mind. That's fine. That's what he said about David's. Again, um, like I said, Jason Blum would love to do more of these. He doesn't have the franchise anymore. Apparently Malik, who is the person who owns the rights, Blum says, I would love to extend it if Malik would like us. I'd love to extend it, but we're very busy making sure the third movie is spectacular because our immediate job is to, uh, yeah, work on that. So no current plans, but I wouldn't put it past him. We'll see what the fuck David does with this uh, exorcist 
reboot. God, weird. I don't know how I feel about that. I was super weirded out, and then I super liked it. Yeah. I want to know what the folks at home think. Reach out to us. Uh, You can send us an email, contact at frightday.com. Leave a comment below this episode in the show notes at frightday.com. Reach us on Twitter and Instagram at frightday. Kelly is asleep. Suddenly you're asleep. I am asleep. What the heck I hit happened? a wall. You, I hit a wall. You, you were eating Skittles like an hour ago. I know. I'm, sh- I'm having a sugar crash. I'm crashing now. hard. Oh. Wow. Okay. Well, shaking some chains in your honor, Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> Those are great. Jacob it's, Marley. Fuck. It's been a really fun little ho- uh, season here. We're so fucking busy coming yeah. up. I'm so excited for what we're doing next. We got Turkey Month in november we got a big special yes. announcement uh spooky season part two all december plus Coming right up something after that yep so yep i just want to say thanks everyone for hanging out with us this uh this october this has been fun but uh until then uh-huh. kelly uh-huh. where are you gonna be i'm going to be on twitter at kelly friday mm-hmm. email kelly at friday.com might show up on instagram mm-hmm. sometimes i do trying that those tiktoks these days oh is that right yeah, not Given really. I was going to say, no, I just not. show you like a TikTok and you're like, that's like, cool. How do I, open how this do, I do this thing? <laughs> Great. Yeah. And I'm at Byron McCoy on Twitter and Instagram. ByronFriday.com is my email address. And until next Friday, I'm Byron. I'm Kelly. Buy kids beer? That's the worst. Well, I pl- it would have solved every problem in this movie if he just would have bought those underage children alcohol. I guess. been listening to an audio wool original produced by byron mccoy theme music provided by cemeteries for more programs like this visit audiowool.co